let me just set today's scene for you, or this morning's scene. First morning with Tyler here in Idaho. If you can see behind me, it doesn't look like a tent. We're in the Taj Mahal. Give us a uh, Born and Raised Outdoors Cribs version here. <laughs> this would be the kitchen. This would be the kitchen. The master suite is back here. <laughs> this is the uh, porch. That's pretty sweet. And as we move back here, we go to uh, the dining room. And this is pretty nice here too. And we move back into the bathroom. Ooh. And uh, as we roll back here, this is where the kids sleep. <laughs> this is where Trent and Wes are sleeping. The kids are in here. And uh, yeah, and as true to Cribs fashion, we go to the fridge. And inside here, we've got the no Cristal, but uh, close beer. One and beer. Nacho <laughs> cheese. Beer and nacho cheese. Right now, it's a little cold outside to go show cars off. Um, <laughs> that's out that's outside <laughs> 20 something so far it hasn't really froze maybe a couple mornings it's froze but this morning it's cold out there so we're gonna stay in here until about 11 45. <laughs> i don't maybe, feel right about that maybe not 11 45. Right you're right 10 50 and then we'll get a good jump on we'll listen for bugles from the trailer window right is that the way it works yeah that would be nice i guess but our our generators are pretty loud and not turn those off. that is true but no, it's just about daylight here and we're going to be headed out and kind of just a dart on a map picked already. And we're going to see if we can't find an elk that wants to bugle. Not going to lie, this wasn't bad. Wes, what do you think? I got a good night's sleep. Did you snore? I don't know. Couldn't hear myself. I also could not hear Trent because I wore earplugs. I didn't hear anything, so I don't think I did. I didn't hear any snoring at all. See? I slept like a baby, didn't hear you. See, out. Cody has nothing to whine about. He is a whiner. He looks like a ball of fire. <laughs> mm -hmm. I need to walk mm -hmm. up. So I don't know, maybe just right right down the bottom of this canyon. Right there where it does mm -hmm. the switch back. Because we're starting here. We side hill through that and then it's dropping up. dropping down any one of these. If we if we get all the way here, then you just drop down that ridge right to the truck. We're strategizing today's hunt. Brand new country. Um, we're gonna do the two vehicle, one drop off down at the bottom. We're gonna cruise up near the top. Well, not right. really near the top, but on I another ridge, hike all the way down that, then drop into the truck. I take a breath. I'm not gonna lose. This is what I came in. getting a beautiful early start at 7 45 a.m actually got a really good hunt pretty excited about it we're dropping probably drop my truck off down at the bottom then heading up to a ridge where we can park and it's going to be like an eight ten mile day beautiful country benchy a couple little small lakes ponds looking stuff i predict by 1 30 we'll have a bowl on the ground be packing them out steve's really sad about these like time restraints on getting a bowl i mean I could just say today, nope. like any time today, but he has to be by 1.30. Waiting on the grandpa crew. Grandpa Trent just slowing everything down all the time. Pop a fish. Pop a fish. Guy just likes to take his time. Doesn't worry about anybody else, whatever Trent wants. It's real <laughs> selfish <laughs> SOB. <laughs> Walk 
through that stuff. You just walk through it. <laughs> so we have this debate going about brushy country. Steve's like, man, this could be rough. Eight miles in this brushy country. And it looks to me like a manicured golf course through there. <laughs> that, that's an exaggeration. I mean, yeah, there's some stuff, but... <laughs> <laughs> one, <laughs> one man's brush is another man's golf course. Golf course, I guess, yeah. 24 degrees out, the windows are down. A lot of last night's mountain house coming out in this rig right now. And it's not me. Sorry. Wes, you know who you remind me of? It's Brad Pitt on Ocean's Eleven. He's always eating. I will take that every day of the week. Thank you. Brad Pitt's a sexy son of a gun. You see him on Troy? Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's enough. That's enough. What? Print your t-shirt. Me and my warm jacket and long sleeve. Trent's whole day pack thing. That's pretty sweet. I don't know. I got enough food for all of us, though. I do know that. We're going to be in good shape on food. Doing some, you know, office work, paperwork, emails. Also, I was taking a poop. Say how you want to say it, Steve. But while I was doing that, we got a bowl. Cody got a bowl to bugle down below us here. So we are dropping in. We got Tyler and Steve as shooters. We're gonna go shoot an elk in just about. Mm. I'm gonna say it's gonna slow play out. So 42 minutes or so. So what we did there was called this kind of a safe play. And we what we did was right when we heard the bull, even though he was between 200 yards and 300 yards, we just set up just because this time of year, they're really looking for cows. And so you never know, he could just come in. So we set up there, nothing. And so what we're gonna do now is kind of bump down on him and keep on getting closer and closer to where we think he is right now. A lot of times if you just, you know, there's these bulls that'll just turn and come right in without saying a word and you'll be caught with your pants down. So that was our first setup. Uh, nothing happened. We never heard any bugles. We never, nothing. So we're going to drop in down on him a little bit and see if we can't get him to crack off and then give us a better idea where his location is. So we've gone about 400 yards probably. And um, no responses. He bugled twice and that was about, uh, about 20 minutes ago. I was just talking with Steve. He said, this is actually, this is part for the course for hunting in wolf country, they'll bugle. I'll kind of say, hey, I'm over here, but then it's not that back and forth interaction that we like, so. Right now we're just taking it 70 yards bugling, 70 yards bugling, just so we don't bump the herd. I found their tracks. We're definitely behind them, so we're just taking it real easy. This is kind of a learning process for us as well. We're still out kind of, we're still having fun. So I think we're all in agreement that this bull is probably on this little finger ridge or 
one side or the other. So we'll go down this other little kind of slower rolling ridge. Wind should be safe, you know, should be ripping. And then drop down and then locate him and then figure it out from there. Is shooting him in your plane? Uh. Yeah. And then uh, maybe he'll come over there and we can shoot him. Why are you saying maybe? <sighs> well, we might have to go over there before he can come here. But shooting him is in the plan. Shooting him is the end plan, okay. for sure. I like, to, I like an optimist hunter. All right, he was trying to second guess himself there. Things have escalated. We just heard him again. He's down out in front of us. I can sound like a distance quite a ways out. So we've made the made the move to push on him. So this whole thing is kind of like a chess game, right? Without the buzzer thing. No buzzer. You just long drawn out chess game. Pro tip number. We should just start over with the pro tips. Pro tip number one is when closing the distance on elk, try to give Cody some Beano so he doesn't fart and scare everything away. They're really loud. It's weird. It's weird. <laughs> I concur. I concur. <laughs> Just grabbing a little water here. We lost those elk, we can't find them anymore. So we're just gonna keep covering ground, looking for them, just hopscotching, trying to see if they'll bugle again. But uh, it's been frustrating. It's like they'll bugle once and then maybe twice and then nothing. So we'll find them again. We've been chasing for miles now and either them or a different herd, we'll, we'll find something. But just grabbing a little water to replenish here. I don't know if those were his cows or if they were just, we ran into them. Yeah. But I was wondering, you know, you would have thought that a big bull like that. There's definitely two, right? Yeah. I think there's three. You think there's three? I think two or three. His bugle was weird. It would sound like he would start a whole bugle and then it would like, you don't know if it's off. another bugle or not, but it's, mm -hmm. it's like, you know, awesome. When we first set up, I swear to God, I saw horns like 
50 yards to the right of you. In front to the right of you. Sounded like it. I just like, I felt right there. There he is. There he is. But then I saw him and then heard another bull like right there. We came super close. But it's not over yet. We've got all his tracks and he's headed out this way. We're just gonna just keep keep chasing him until he decides he wants to turn around and look at us. This is part of the fun, man. We've been at this bull all day long. All day long. We just about got him just a second ago, but close. We'll stay after him. We'll, we'll catch up to him again. Oh. Barely reached the top. Little, little bulls can make little rubs. And big bulls can make little rubs. But big bulls, or little bulls can't make big rubs. That. So this could have been a giant. He just, one swipe. Deep thoughts by Jack. Andy. Giant. I go with giant. My kind of elk. Tasty. Tasty. <laughs> Tasty. So we're sound checking the next base and we just got up to the ridge here. tracks and follow them into the next basin. In the end I think maybe the cows winded us but the wind wasn't great. But... So I think we're gonna sit down for a little bit, have a meal, sit down, have some lunch and let these kind of calm down and then take after them in just a half hour or so. Hopefully there's other elk in this basin. We're just jumping basin to basin to basin. We got about a I don't know what he said, eight to 10 mile loop that we're making today. So we're just keeping on jumping. A little frustrating, but we're still in the game. We are still in the game. Look at what I just found. That's an even sign too. It's here. Bear bites, look at all the, all the bear marks all over it. So actually, it's kind of weird. I know the guy actually that built that. He's the one that sold me my first bow and Trevor his first bow. It was the guy that built that tube right there. Abe Moline was his name. He used to be a timber faller. Then he went into bugle making and uh, had some latex cow calls and stuff that sounded really good. Small world. Might be a good memento. How do you feel about your feelings? Well, can you give me a pro tip too? I feel like the elk are not here right now. Well, they were here like weeks ago. We gotta find another hot bowl, I know that. Pro tip, what are we at on number two? It's gotta be, I've already done, covered the flatulence because that's just out of control in this outfit. It is. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Was it? That's a bugle. Huh? Was it? That's a bugle. Mm. That's a bugle. Gotta be. Pro tip number two from the cameraman. Get all these old fogies some freaking hearing aids. One, two, three, four of them. I feel like that was directed. I feel like that was directed right at me. Are you the one that's pointing at mystery bugles? I didn't point at anything. I was running the Then camera. I wasn't pointing at you then. If it is a bugle, if one bugle's down there, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna apologize? Did I rest my case? These little millennial whippersnappers, I think they're so doggone cool, don't they? When he started the trip, did he have a man bun? Oh yeah, he's had a man bun before. He has a skullet. You can see the top, it's bald. A little bit party in the back. Bugles, we can't find them again. Tracked them out, 
got into a different basin. So we're just going to run this basin. As you can see behind me, this is just a big basin here. We're just going to side hill this thing down. There's some flats in the bottom. It looks really, really good on the map. So we're going to go check it out. We got about three and a half miles back to the pickup. We're going to hunt it out and see what happens here. Check out these red, red flowers though, or red stuff. It's just super pretty here, man. The colors are all popping right now. It's just really, really pretty. I love it. it's like red, yellow, green, orange. It's so cool. Am I good here? Stop, see what he, if I can locate him, try to get the wind better. If we get up into this ridge and get this walk around, if we can call him into us, just die. Just die. He's close. He's not that far down there. Let's just get him. Long game again. Four, five, six to your tree, and I zoomed in on it. And as soon as I did, he turned and walked away. Really wide. How close were you? I think he's behind the trees again at like 50 yards. When I was doing the dirt, came over the ridge, he saw me at like 90 yards. Oh, you saw him? 
Oh yeah, I'm like, I just barked and screamed, and he barked and screamed down there, and I come trucking over, and I'm like, gosh, it looks like, yep, yeah, that's an elk. And he's standing there just eyeing me, and he, he turned, and that's when I screamed at him, and then I thought, the game was over, I freaking broke the stick over the tree, I'm like, gosh, I should have a baby fit over there. He sounds so awesome. Such a cool Dude, sound. Dude, his bugle is so cool. It's so unique. <laughs> And then when you get up in the answer, I'm like, oh yeah, here we go. I know, he did like twice. Oh. I was gonna give this to him hard in the face. <laughs> I don't care, I know it. When we rambushed down the hill, I just put the brakes on. Right there. <laughs> I was another Tyler's going to shoot him. I thought Tyler was just going to be like... I thought he was just going to gonna walk charge. right or left. I thought I was just going to go... If he would have cleared those bushes and those trees... I mean, he was 30 yards easy. I saw him at about 50. Did you? All I had to do was go right or left from where he was at. That was pretty awesome. That was fun. I had an absolute way. I just ate... <laughs> so hard. I, I saw it. it. He's over there Let's see, I remember when I first learned how to walk. I just, I heard a snap and I look back and I see Cody kick something and he goes, go back to the little thing. Just, like, just go, like, I thought maybe he was just going to come and loop because we were clear down. I know, clear down I'm like, where did Tweedledee and Tom go? I, I just thought this thing's weird. If he does something weird, we're going to count. Well, that's, <laughs> that's finally, I'm let like, you guys have the strength. I kind of held back, let them up open. It's so open and so thick at the same time. That's unbelievable. Every time we've gotten that bowl, it's just... He was always... Five yards. He was always in the right spot for him. Well, we were taking the Onyx walk of shame and trying to figure out where the heck the truck that we parked down there was. You all right? And um, anyway, we've been bugling. That bull just bugled off. Down below us, it sounded like quite a ways, but now it's a, it's a pants ripper. I'm not gonna lie, I just ripped them just now, but we're going for it. We got about 25 minutes till dark. We're trying to run and gun here a little bit, but the uh, elk are kind of up and they're feeding pretty fast, I think. So it's been hard to pinpoint them. It's been hard to tell exactly right where they are. So we're just gonna try to run and see if we can't make this make this happen real quick. It's been a pretty epic day. I mean, we've been on that bull for a long time today, that other one. And then um, now we got another opportunity maybe to do something here, so. And we still got a long ways to go to get to the pickup. It's gonna be a late night. He's not that far down though. No.
was shot so quick. Like, he was right in here. And I saw the cow right in here. And then all of a sudden I saw him below me. I was like, oh crap. So I, and he was just walking away. I shot so quick. I just shot right underneath him. After you shot, he stood here for like freaking a minute. Yeah, it was like right here, wasn't it? Right here somewhere, yeah. Yeah. Just that there. Dude, that sounded like you. I thought it could have sounded like a pumpkin. It was real tight. Anyway, Steve missed him, but we still got the bull. You guys got to see the bull at least. It looked like a dandy too. What a day. <laughs> what a day. How far is that? Like 30, dude. He was quartered away pretty severe, but I just put my pin right in the middle of him and shot. I was like, you're dead. I shot quick, but I was like, you're dead. And then I just saw my arrow kick down. He came up, I saw him up there, and that's why I started raking. It was good though, because he runs out to that opening and I get him. Do you really? Yeah. Great bull. Yeah. Great bull. 260, 270, something. Great bull. Five minutes at all. Nice job. Nice job. Dang it. It happens. And then he started hitting me in the back of the head too. I was like, someone better be shot really freaking fast. I can't argue with that day. Not a bad day. Uh, no. Actually, Steve, end this out. End this out fast. Take us it to the next level. Today was awesome. <laughs> it's just about dark. We got 20 minutes of light left, maybe. We've been on chased one bull for the entire day. Finally, after Tyler gets, we have so many close opportunities and it doesn't happen. And then we leave him, not 500 yards later, we hear another bull bugle and we all do this. Finally narrow it down, we get down here. Tyler and I are running like double shooter setups. And uh, it's thick, you can tell. And I had a quick shot. And Shot for 30 yards, thought he was dead, and I hit some branches and that I just didn't see. There's these little fur branches right here. But it's an amazing day. Day one in uh, our new spot in Idaho, I guess day two hunting Idaho. Hard to argue with it. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, we're gonna hike out of here, and we got a long, long hike. It's gonna be a dark one tonight, but oh man, way to end off the day with just a hoorah. It was a miss. Everybody misses. We've all done it, you know. But we were here and we tried. That's the main thing. And we called another bull in, so it was pretty awesome. Hope you guys are possibly learning something with this whole series. Um, it's, we're not doing a how-to thing, but we're taking everything that we're doing, whether it be right, wrong, or indifferent, or however you hunt, hopefully maybe you can adapt some things um, or take some <laughs> of, our, of our mistakes uh, from, your, from your hunting repertoire. <laughs> Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys like it, please um, hit the subscribe button. It really would mean a ton to us. Another day here in Idaho. It's only day two, and we flung arrows. We killed a cow two days ago. Today we flung at a really, really nice bull. Tomorrow, you never know what's gonna happen, so please tune in tomorrow. Burr. I start a fire if that won't work. That'll be a little warmer at least. Man, it's cold out here. All right, guys, as you can see, it's just me again. I promise I won't cry this time. I don't promise anything, actually. That's a lie. Yeah, I'm starting to think I don't really have any friends. No, Cody's over at the warehouse shipping some orders. He's going to drive over to Trevor's dental office and do it uncut right in the middle of the dental procedure. But anyway, didn't didn't go over real well. But let's talk about the hunt real quick. As far as the hunt went, that was a pretty awesome, awesome day. Uh, Idaho so far has not been that terrible. It was it was something else. We did a long, long loop, like we said in the film, and we just started at one end. That was kind of the neat thing about having more than one vehicle and then a team of guys that's, you know, just more than one person. So we parked a rig at the, at, at one, not really the bottom, but we parked a rig at one end and then we just made, climbed a huge loop and all we did was pretty much draw hop or basin hop, maybe that's what you'd call it. Got on those bulls, we were on that one bull all day and that's what they seemed to do. They'd push off, they'd push off. Finally we had to get in real, real tight on that bull. Oh man, it came so close, so close on the first bull and then it was just cover ground we had about an hour till dark maybe and we just started getting as fast as we could go to where the other truck was in that direction just to try to get something going and, and sure enough boom we got a bugle way down we couldn't really pinpoint it because there was starting to be a pretty good wind 
So it was really tough to pinpoint. We screwed up one time going one way. Anyway, finally figured out where the bugle came from, got down on it. Steve got a shot at it and shot right underneath it. It was cool. It was a, it was a really, really neat hunt. Um, it was fun for me to get back in the camera and uh, on this series and, and, and start filming some more. I really enjoy it. I just want to move right along to shout outs. First off, thank you guys so much for all the happy birthday uh, comments and stuff. I really, really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you so much. That is, uh, that's pretty special. One thing I wanted to do is we went to Boise and that was just a, a lightning trip as far as we flew out, got there at like one in the morning and then we had the Christmas party that afternoon and then we flew out again at, at eight the next morning. So it was a super, super fast trip. But when we were there, the thing I didn't get to show you guys is people sometimes give us stuff and it's just, it's so awesome and they don't want anything in return. It's just out of the kindness of their hearts. But it's just, I'm just so humbled by some of the stuff that we received. So I just wanted to show everybody like some of the stuff. Like there was a guy that gave us all army, US army. And this is like stretchy, like workout wear. Gave us all, every single one of us, a, a t-shirt of these um, and an army backpack. This was really cool. And I don't know all these names, and I apologize for not knowing all the names, but um, the people that gave it, they were just like, they just wanted to, they just wanted to show um, their appreciation for the series and, and what we've been doing, and it's, it's pretty special, man, that they don't even, that they don't want their name or anything recognized. But someone came up and gave me this, and I'm, I was just dumbfounded, and there was a bunch of people around, and he's just like, you guys, you guys are awesome, and uh, wanted to give this to us. And, it was, getting it back on the plane was kind of funny. We had some real funny looks and carry on, but uh, isn't that awesome with the land of the free? This is the first moose, moose horn I've ever had. The first moose shed that we've, I've really ever seen, honestly, in my life. So they're heavy, man, they're heavy and dense, but really cool, really, really cool. Thank you so much. Here was another funny, a funny one. Someone, someone had a picture. They, they took a screenshot of me and Dirk all painted up and uh, anyway, wanted me to sign it for them. I don't know, but and he gave me a couple copies. Uh, uh, pretty funny. That was that, that was a fun day. That was a fun day. And I'm sure there's other things I don't know that Cody has or something like that from the trip. But uh, but I just want to thank everybody that uh, came out to the Boise thing and and uh, we had a we had a blast. We had a really really fun time meeting people. We're going to be doing that again in Longview uh, the first of. January, first of the, this new year. Yeah, so I don't know when tickets go on sale for that or it's gonna be a live podcast. Uh, I'm not sure how that's all working out yet, but that it's gonna be that first weekend, we're gonna talk about it in the end cuts. We'd love to meet anybody and, and see anybody there, so. All right, some shout outs, guys. Got some, my wife wrote down for me. I wanted to say hey to Evan Ein Einzenbath. We thank you for tuning in and to Daniel who is watching over you. Uh, congrats to Hayden and Maria Sams on your new baby Waylon. Congratulations guys. Eden Adams, I hear you're having a bit of issues getting your grades up. Oh, okay, <laughs> getting your grades up. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna say, I'm gonna say, buddy, the same thing I say to my kids. And, and grades are a big thing. I mean, you're growing up, you're young, and, and school is fun, and then Anyway, what I say to my kids is you can't go hunting unless your grades are up. Hunting is a privilege in our family that we get to do. And, and um, so like Wyatt, if he, if he doesn't have his grades up, he doesn't get to go. And believe me, there has been a couple times that he has not got to go. I mean, it's just, it's the truth. I, I'm very, very strict on that just because it's, school is so important um, that education and um, keep those grades up. Have a good work ethic and keep those grades up. Uh, Eden. Want to give a big shout out to, oh yeah, this is, a, uh, give a shout out to the Paradise Bowhunters Archery Club. So if you remember Paradise, California, everything burned down. Well, their whole archery club burned down, I guess. And I'm assuming it was all their targets and everything as well for their archery club. So man, that, uh, that's a tough one to swallow. So big shout out to you guys for, um, for going through what you've been through. That's man, I can't imagine it. Todd Nicholas and Kevin Long. Thank you so much for watching. So that's mine for today, and uh, we, are, we are burning them down. We are getting closer. I've been in contact with Tyler Crockett, possibly Steve Speck. They may be coming. I'm hoping they will show up, coming here to shoot some uncuts with us. They have busy, busy schedules too. So anyway, I hope to see them soon. I don't know how many videos are left, but um, 
But the Idaho series is off to a running start, we should say, and uh, it does get better, I promise you. It does get better. Thank you guys so much for watching this one. I'm gonna go cut this up, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow.